Uh, fun game. Fun win. Uh, pulled out every bullet we had in the, in the chamber to try to get that done. Not, um, you know, the w weather didn't want to cooperate. And, and I thought New Mexico did a good job with, with their scheme to create problems for us all night uh, defensively and, and honestly, offensively, some things that we struggled with too, not knowing a whole lot of, of what we were going to see. Took a while to adjust, played much better in the second half defensively to win in the first. But uh, to to get a fake field goal and a fake punt both in the same game and then to create a turnover on special teams and get a defensive score, it really took every – everything we had to get it done. I think it's kind of the nature of our team right now. Uh, whatever it takes, whoever it takes to step up and proud of proud of a win. The um, the environment of the game, the the wind, the rain, it, it did play a factor. Uh, we got really fortunate late for us to have gotten the ball in the end zone and, and gotten some points before it really dropped on us uh, and, and definitely did not play into – into New Mexico's favor late in the fourth quarter, the way the weather got very severe the last five minutes. Uh, fortunate that we were able to get down what we needed to earlier in that. We uh, Hopefully we'll get a few guys back again this week, try to keep healing up, grow some guys up. Proud of the young guys that played and played well and, and, and proud of our team for responding at halftime and coming back and playing a much better second half. We, uh, we had a tough, tough trip this week to go to Hawaii. Not easy to do, I think. Uh, They've proven to be really, really difficult to, to beat at home, especially. And this is uh, a lot of young guys going over there for the first time. We'll have to block out the distractions of the trip and just how long it takes to get there and how it will adjust our, our week and, and how we prep during the week and be focused on the task at hand and, and find a way to uh, to get to 500. This is a, as I said last week, it's a must win. We want to be bowl eligible. We can't let this one slip. we got to find a way to go win, and I think they'll make that very, very difficult. A lot of very close games with the exception of Fresno. A lot of close games in a row where they were right there at the end. And, and I would expect that's what, we, uh, that's what we'll see out of those, those guys when we get there. Um, we got to keep getting better and, and, and play better ball. Uh, we did not turn the ball over. That is the biggest thing we did offensively because we really didn't do a lot else very well. But uh, not turning the ball over was, uh, was enough to go along with great defense and, and really, really uh, good special teams play. And so we'll uh, we'll put all three pieces together this week and hopefully play better on offense and find a way to get another win. What questions do you have? Hey, Coach Patrick Mayhorn with the Ag Ship. Uh, how much similarity do you see between Colorado State's offense and Hawaii is given the staff connections there? Uh, there? There's a lot of things that you do see. There's the air raid principles that fit in. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, Timmy – comes from the run and shoot, but then been in the air raid as well. So I think you see glimpses of both. Uh, they, um, but they got different pieces to the puzzle. I mean, they're different different bodies that they're playing with. But but you see enough to to have um, have some carryover in those two systems. I think it see you see it in special teams as well. To be honest with you, there's some there's some overlap there. Guys that have been on staff together and kind of know each other. So those two areas you see a good bit that looks the same. Coach Eric Franson with 106.9 The Band. Uh, the fake field goal, was that a concept that you took from somebody else? Looked like Oklahoma ran a pretty similar play just a few weeks ago. You know, we we had the scheme up front, the exchange that OU used. Uh, we originally worked that without the uh, toss. It was more of a direct snap. And we just thought the, the toss that they used uh, seemed to fit really, really well. We didn't block it up front the same as they did. Schematically, it's, it's, it's a good bit different. But the exchange was clean, and it did fit, and, it, and I thought it helped with the dynamic of the play. Hey, Coach Al at, at KBNU. You just talked about special teams a minute ago, and then you just mentioned that Colorado State kind of like it. Jay Norvell said he plays all these best players on special teams. You mentioned Jamie Nance, how well he played the other night. Are you playing a lot of main guys on special teams? Are you using mostly – younger players or whatever. Well, we're playing younger players everywhere, to be honest with you. So um, we we believe in starters being on special teams. And if you look at our starting kickoff cover team, you see a guy like Daniel Grizak and uh, Brock Lane out there. I mean, Max was starting at middle linebacker this week. Last couple weeks, he's running down. Uh, we're going to make sure and put our punt team as Brian Cobb and Byron Vaughn and 
you look across AJ Mompachon, we're gonna play starters on special teams. Now we we are smart about how many of those we will put them on. I mean, you can't play every down of offense or defense and then play on all four special teams, but we are we will definitely put them on a couple. And and some guys have the ability to play a whole game and, and play on on three. But a guy like Jamie Nance is a good example. Uh, Jaden Smith, uh, Xavion Steele, those guys that find a role on special teams that they really, really enjoy and are very good at, even though they're not playing a ton of snaps anywhere else. And so you've got some of both. Uh, I think it takes both to be good in special teams. And we put a tremendous amount of pride and effort into being good in that phase. And we don't win that game probably Saturday without it. Thing I was going to ask you about was I don't know if it got talked about after the game. Robert Brooks in the second half was really, really pretty good running the football. Yeah. Can you talk again about what that second half running game was a little bit better, obviously. I mean, the tighter obviously hurt and things. I don't know how the situation will be. Yeah, we didn't we didn't do anything very consistently offensively the other night, with the exception of not turning the ball over. It was a struggle. We knew that was going to be the case. It was frustrating. The weather did not cooperate. We really needed to be able to push the ball downfield better than we did, and it just wasn't possible with the wind blowing like it like it did. It even affected vertical throws with the wind. The ball just sailed on you. Um, with Calvin going down early, Briggs had to step in. I thought he did a great job. He didn't put the ball on the ground. A couple big runs, a couple extended drives where he got the first down. The you know the best run of the day, the explosive that set us up to score. Um, he, he's getting better all the time, and he's one of those young guys that doesn't act like a young guy, if that makes sense. Coach Anderson, Jason Turner from the Herald Journal. I just wanted to ask you a couple of status questions. Good. Is uh, Calvin, is he currently in concussion protocol? And secondly, uh, they mentioned on TV that Gervin was uh, suspended for this game. Will he be available this week? Yeah, Gervin is back. Uh, you know, it was a one-game suspension. We dealt with that. He handled everything the way he should. He was in my office this morning with a great attitude, ready to move forward. Uh, it's just part of the process. Uh, don't like dealing with it, but those are things that you do deal with through, through the course of a year. I uh, actually love the way he handled it. He handled it like a man, and we moved forward. Calvin is in concussion protocol, and he will be day-to-day. Uh, we will see. You know, we leave on Thursday to travel uh, with, with just the logistics of travel over there. It's not easy. We're leaving Thursday, so we'll have to make some decisions early in the week as to what he can and cannot do. He, he can't afford to have a setback. As long as he stays on – on uh, schedule, you know, he should be ready to go. You can't afford a setback. Hopefully he doesn't have any. Coach, Brian Phillips, Big Blue, USU Aggie News. Yeah, had 12 penalties again Saturday night for 113 yards. Um, did the weather play a factor in a couple of those, or is it just a lot of things that you'd still like to see cleaned up? I can't imagine the weather had anything to do with any of the bad decisions we made. We, um, you know, several were competitive penalties, pass interference, holding at the point of attack, things that we can technically clean up. But we just had some just poor decisions, and those are the ones that frustrate you. Uh, I, I know Max is the freshman player of the week this week, but he had two personal fouls that are just careless, one of which I thought was a probably a poor flag. The other one he absolutely earned – uh, Sturs are being kicked out. He earned that one as well. We we've got to we did well for a couple weeks and we've kind of slipped back into it. It's something we got to get away from. We're lucky to win. We've got to be more disciplined than that. We talk about it and preach it and show film of it every single week. At some point, we got to grow up, and that is the frustrating part uh, of what we're doing right now is those inexperienced mistakes and. Um, it's gonna it's gonna cost us a game somewhere. It already has throughout the early part of the year. Can't afford for it to cost us one down the stretch. Patrick Mayo with the Ag Ship again to follow up on that. It seemed like there was a moment in sort of the the, the, the gap. I don't know. I think or, I think or Edwards, Edwards. Go go ahead. Go ahead. Just having veteran guys who could step up do for you in in that regard. Like how important is that? I missed most of that question. You had to give me that one again. <laughs> Are y'all getting bits right, and pieces? Are y'all getting bits and pieces of the audio all of a sudden? Yeah, I, I cannot. I, I'll uh, I'll see if I can fix my audio. I cannot hear anything you're saying. Okay. Can the rest of you guys hear me? Okay. All uh, right. Just me, must be yours. 
Anybody else? Hey, Coach, in specific then about Hawaii, can you talk about the quarterback now? Looks like Shager is the guy. I mean, he, he played last week. They played the other guy earlier. And then the running back, I mean, that's the guy who would rush for a lot of yards, but now all of a sudden it's Tyler Hines has been the guy lately. What do you yeah. see on their offensive side? Yeah, they're playing a lot of guys. Uh, obviously, year one for him, trying to get a feel for his roster. Uh, you know, they, they look different offensively right now than they did early in the year. I think they – they were trying a lot of things early, and, and little by little, they've become a little bit more simplistic in the sense that it's year one. We want to build a foundation. We've seen a ton of different defense from them as well. I, I think trying to find what their personnel is and what fits the bodies that they have. I think it's typical year one. I, Tim does a good job. Number one, I, I think I think he's a really good ball coach. I, I just, at this point, uh, very similar to what we thought going into New Mexico. You could kind of see anybody at this point. I, I think they're trying to grow guys up and build for the future, which I think is a really smart approach, um, just frustrating at times. So we'll try to get a beat on their basic stuff that we that we think we can see, but I don't know that we can nail it in, in on anything really, really specifically because – You've seen a lot of offense, and you've seen a lot of defense to this point, and personnel has changed week to week. Have you heard anything from other coaches about going over to this stadium that they put together over there in Hawaii? Not particularly. Just the you know logistics are different for everybody. It's not going to be a simple, easy trip for us. Uh, it, it's smaller. It's smaller than what you normally see. Our, our guys need to be prepared for that. They have played very good at home. You can see it. They've been really close. Uh, against teams that that uh, probably physically match up better, so uh, I think it's uh, you know being able to stay focused on the job and go and play in your best. It, you need to kind of be prepared for the environment, and you've got to deal with the travel. I mean, they deal with it all the time coming here. Uh, it, it's a challenge for us going there. Coach Eric, sorry, go ahead, Eric. Oh, sorry, Jason. I'm uh, just going to quickly ask about MJ to DC and how he's coming along. Day to day, he wants to play bad. We're just being very smart about when uh, he should. Uh, when you're dealing with stingers and neck and shoulder issues, you can't afford to be careless. He wanted to play Saturday, and we made a decision not to allow that to happen. We're going to keep watching him. He was in here again this morning. Coach, I'm ready. We will see. I hope he is. He makes us better. We just have to be smart and safe. We're not going to put a guy out in harm's way. So, yeah, Coach Anderson, I just wanted to ask about their defense. You said they've used a lot of personnel, and clearly they have. They've had 40 different guys start a, yeah. a game this year. Um, what, what do you see from their defensive scheme? Uh, what, what's, what's been working for them? What, yeah, what do you see from them? A lot. You see a lot. Uh, man coverage, zone coverage, four down front, three down front. They played with a star, spoke safety. We don't know what to expect. It's been a progression throughout the course of the year, I think, based off of available bodies and also who they're playing. What will they perceive us as and how will they try to defend us? They haven't seen our system. Uh, they haven't seen our spacing and our splits either. So we don't we don't really have a, a great clue. And it's going to be part of the challenge is being able to kind of identify how they're going to play us early and make adjustments as needed. Because in game film, you see a different personality show up several different times and different opponents throughout the course of the year. A lot of guesswork for us and knowing what to expect. Coach, can you hear me now? Yeah, I got you. All right, Patrick Mayhorn with the Ag Ship. I wanted to ask about, uh, looked like there was a play in the second half where Calvin, uh, um, sorry, Alfred Edwards uh, prevented maybe an after the play penalty. I, I don't know who it was he was holding back, but what's the, the importance of veteran guys for limiting those kind of penalties? Yeah, you got to. You got young guys out there that haven't really been in the mix. They get caught up in the moment. Uh, an old salty vet like Alfred. Uh, I saw Byron Vaughn grab a guy. Uh, during a play earlier as well, we need to uh, we need those guys to step into those roles. Hunter Reynolds has done that several times throughout the year. We've seen we've seen that happen. Uh, it, it helps to have we have a very small senior class, but the ones that we do have do a phenomenal job of stepping in and showing their maturity when we need them to. Uh, we need some of these other young guys to to kind of take take ownership of of those kind of emotions as well and step away from some of those circumstances and avoid those careless penalties.
Yes, sir, I have an ask you about Cooper Lagarde coming back. What did you see from him, and what more? Obviously, you want to see more. What did you? What was the evaluation there? I, I thought it was okay. He he looked he looked confused at times. Uh, you know, Rocky and Danny, that defense is kind of built around chaos, and they did a good job of of, of, of grabbing his eyes. He he, you know, you you could tell he's frustrated on the sideline. Uh, I was hoping that he would have a kind of a seamless transition back on the field, but that particular defense made it a, made it a challenge for him. Uh, he didn't turn the ball over. Took a couple sacks that we'd love to have gotten away from. Missed a couple guys. The weather didn't help. It was it was a struggle to connect the dots. Um, you know, I, I, he'll get better this week. He, he, he still, again, moved the change with his feet when he needed to. He hit a few guys open in, in key situations. The drive late in the game in the fourth quarter against the win to go down and get the field goal, I thought he settled in and looked like the guy that we've been playing with the last couple of weeks before the injury, and hopefully we'll pick up where he left off there. And, um, you know, if you don't turn the ball over, you got a chance either way. So that's, that's the best thing he did was stayed calm and didn't turn the ball over. Anybody else? Guys, I'll leave you all with this if anybody's listening. Um, today would have been my youngest son's 22nd birthday. We haven't talked a lot about mental health since the, the Mental Health Awareness Week. But um, it's just a reminder, if there are those that are listening that are hurting, um, please reach out and, and speak up to folks. There's a 988 uh, crisis hotline that is available that um, could be utilized as well. I just encourage people that uh, mental health is something we gotta we gotta think about and we got to attack every day. And, and today is a reminder to me of the cost if we if we don't. So um, step up, speak out, and, and, and lean on those around you that God's put in your path. So have a great day, guys. Robert, Jason Turner from the Herald Journal. Uh, Hawaii's given up a lot of rushing yards this year. I want to say 6.2 yards, 6.3 yards per carry. So uh, how hungry are you to, to, to get a shot at that defense? Oh, I'm very hungry. I'm just I'm ready to play and get, some, get a lot of yards, try to hit 100. And Robert, I'll lose from PBNU. Can you – uh, talking about how you got the call to really play most of the second half of this last game after uh, Calvin got uh, the, the concussion or whatever and what that was like and how you feel like to play. Uh, it, was, it was okay. Uh, when my coach had told me I was already ready, got it ready for the next man to step up. And Calvin, he was, uh, he was still motivating me. He was telling me just keep going and just do what I do best. Robert, Brian Phillips, you at Big Blue USU Aggie News. Talk about how cool it is to be able to come in as a true freshman and, and be a major contributor most most weeks. Uh, it's very awesome. Uh, my old line, they make it possible for me. They open all the gaps for me, and I just shoot through them and have fun with it. I give a big credit to them. Robert Eric Franson with 106.9 The Fan. Uh, have you ever been to Hawaii before, and how do you feel about uh, making the trip? Uh, I know I've never been to Hawaii. I always wanted to go, though, but then I found out how long the flight is. I ain't ready for the flight, but I'm ready to land in uh, Hawaii. Have fun. Robert Al Lewis again. Can you just uh, tell us where the offense you feel is right now with maybe Lagarde coming back and – trying to get back into the swing of things and going through all the quarterbacks and things that it's been like this year for the offense. And can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, like I said, we uh, we just prepare for everything. I feel like we're getting back into the groove of him coming back, and we're uh, happy to have him back. And we're uh, happy to know that he's uh, feeling well. Calvin, Eric Franson, one more, or Calvin, <laughs> Robert, uh, one more question for me. Uh, just uh, with the the weather like it was on Saturday, have you ever had a game like that when you were in high school? Uh, I haven't had a game like that. It was raining and cold. I just had a game where it was cold. So I had to prepare to take my, I had to take my gloves off 
So I want to drop the ball. But it was it was pretty fun to play in the rain like that. But it was cold. you one more about a bunch of there seems to be a bunch of texas guys that have come up here to play at utah state you guys stay together uh has that been an interesting situation to come up here into a different kind of climate and environment than you guys are used to from texas oh yeah it's kind of it's kind of different but i, I kind of like it looking at the mountains got some nice nice mountains out here and all of the uh, texas guys we kind of hang out a, a lot hey max jason turner from the herald journal uh i mean Last game of your high school senior season, you you know blew out your knee. Uh, you've been able to return so quickly and and, and be a, an impact performer as a true freshman. Uh, what's the journey been like to to get to healthy again? And how gratifying has it been to see the field as much as you have this season? Um yeah, so it's been a long journey. You know, uh, tearing ACL your first game of your senior year is not great. You know, going through some dark paths, but uh. You know, I just got to give all the glory to God. You know, uh, he helped me get through all those tough times. And, um, you know, you get to a point where you're like, I don't think like when you're coming in the ACL, you're like, I don't know if the coaches think I'll be a good or whatever. But, uh, you know, the coaching staff's been uh, supportive the whole time. Um, my teammates have been supportive the whole time. So, you know, those three things, God, teammates, and my coaches, you know, that's what helped me get to this point. Hey, Max, Kyle Lewis from KBMU Radio. So where you started as a freshman this year, are you surprised now that you're playing as much as you are considering how it's gone? Yeah, um, I'm really surprised because, you know, uh, sure, you know, you got A.J. Vankbachan and M.J. Tafisi, uh, huge uh, big-time linebackers and coming in. Like, you don't know what to expect, you know, big-time uh, big linebackers. You think they're going to they're gonna take it all the way. And uh, as a freshman, you know, freshmen make freshman mistakes, as they say. Um, and you don't think like you're gonna get a lot of playing time, but you know, Coach Bond always talks about next man up and you gotta be ready. So when my time came, I knew it was an opportunity, I gotta take it and go with it. You just got player of the week uh, for a freshman in the conference, but the coach just said that maybe you made a penalty in the game you shouldn't have made. What's your feelings when you hear that kind of thing from the coaching staff? Um, you know, he's right. Uh, I don't like to take a lot of credit for, you know, I just happened to be at the right places at the right times on Saturday. Um, you know, give it up to God, my family, my teammates and coaches, they did it all. I was just a small piece of the product of freshman of the week. And, you know, on paper, it might say a win in freshman of the week, but I made a lot of, I probably made the most mistakes. I'll be the first to say I probably made the most mistakes, you know. Um, but, uh, shoot, I guess, uh, yeah, I got to have more self-control. Um, and just be better next time next week. So we'll see. And uh, even though MJ wasn't physically on the field, you know, he had a big impact too. Uh, AJ Vongbachan was out there helping me the whole time, my teammates. So, you know, I just happened to be at the right place at the right time, made some plays, and that's it. So, yeah. Max, Jason Turner again. You were a, you were a running back at Park City. So, I mean, this was a – I mean, what was it like? Uh, how big of a transition was it for you and how, how – how how seamless did you feel you picked up the you know the position? Um, you know I I when I first got here I like to think about it like linebackers like running back in reverse. That's how that's how I kind of go in, in how it goes in my mind. So when I'm on the field I'm like looking at the running back I'm like this is probably what a running back would think. So uh, it wasn't a big transition to me. It's kind of just like playing running back in reverse and you know. Utah State was my only offer for defense out of all the offers I had, so I kind of want to take a chance on myself and uh, play linebacker, which has been so fun so far. Hey, what's the thing you like the most about playing on defense? And what is the, what's the biggest challenge? Uh, I think the biggest challenge as a freshman is mentally. Uh, you know, the game goes so fast at the college level and having to slow down, like the first half, I would say I made a ton of mistakes because it's going so fast. And, you know, it's like you got to read and react. But as a freshman, it just moves so fast. You're just trying to figure it all out. And I give props to my teammates because the whole time they were talking me through it. Uh, I, I knew the game plan, but, you know, AJ Vampachan, MJ Tafisi, when I came to the sideline, even Siona Moa, who's a year older than me, uh, eligibility wise, you know, those three really helped me. Um, you know, slow the game down. Tim Burmeister, Coach Burmeister, he helped me too. So uh, I give huge props to those guys because, you know, the game's super fast and they helped me. And, yeah. Max, 
Brian Field, Day Blue USU Aggie News. You enrolled at Utah State in January. How much, how well did that help you um, as far as getting into things and getting going? I know you weren't able to do a ton because of the knee injury, but were you able to, do you feel like that helped maybe increase your rehab ability? Oh, 100%. Uh, so before I graduated, me and my mom were talking about it. We were like, uh, should we, should we not? And the big thing came down to which uh, way was going to help my knee get better. And so I decided to graduate early. Um, Coach A talks about it all the time. I personally believe going through it, we have the best training, uh, strength and conditioning staff. You know, Coach Jack, uh, Coach Tom, uh, Coach Andy, and Coach Whitehead, you know, they've been huge in helping me during the offseason. Coach Whitehead the most. Um, I don't think without them, I'd be at the point I'm at now, you know? So it was a huge help. Uh, I'll ask one more, um, Max. I asked uh, Robert Briggs about the Texas connection. On defense, maybe there's a little bit of a freshman connection of guys who are playing now that maybe some thought maybe wouldn't play earlier in the year. Do you guys kind of hang together, tell, help each other, talk, uh, feel like you're kind of a little part of the club on that side of the ball? Um, I would say... I wouldn't necessarily say that. I say the defensive, ball, defensive side of the ball, we're all very close. You know, uh, Sione is also a freshman. So me and him uh, are close. You know, we kind of hang out all the time. But I wouldn't necessarily say there's like a, like a group like that. I just say defensive wise, like we're all super close. And, you know, we all play for each other. And that's a big thing on defense. You know, we made, I personally made a lot of mistakes. They made some mistakes. But it's always about, they, we always talk about the next play. You know, you make a mistake. Um, we come close together each player, so that's what I would say is that not necessarily a freshman group, but to, uh, collectively, we're all super close. Max Eric Franson with 106.9 The Fan. And just uh, what do you see out of Hawaii in your early scouting of them? Um, I, their record may not show that they're good, but, you know, every team in the Mountain West is good. So we got a game plan as if we're game planning for Alabama. Um, they're going to be a good team. Uh, we only play as good as we can, so you know it's big week. I want to know every week, so we just gotta plan for uh, Hawaii and uh, play the best we can.